hello again. Welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it's March. Woo! It is, today is March 1st, which means Which means several, the awful month is gone. Well, and also several exciting things are happening. First of all, Pfizer and a lot of the uh, big pharmaceutical companies are mm. supposed to start releasing the data that they wanted to suppress for mm. 75 years. Mm. And a federal judge had to rule and say, well, we kind of think you guys have to tell us what's in the data. So that's supposed to start coming out today, which might explain why we are about to go into World War yeah. Three. <laughs> not enough fear from the COVID anymore. We have to have more fear. Right. And not then- Not that there's anything not fearful about being in war, be, having Russia invade Ukraine, but it is a coincidental I that mean, with the hype on the United States side, just zoomed up right when COVID was taking a nose bump. I, You know, I saw a really good little cartoon yeah. that literally was two doors yeah. and it was COVID's little yeah. coronavirus walking out the door and a missile walking in this door. And it, it, it does feel a little mm -hmm. bit that way. Uh, you know, obviously there's been a distraction from the... Uh, I would say citizen anger yeah. out of Canada. That story sort of taken yeah. a dive from the truckers. Yep. Um, and yeah, and now we have this nasty situation happening in Europe and is, um, I am staunchly anti-war. Yep. I don't see one reason ever to, to, to go to war. We can use our words, diplomacy is a thing. You should be able to talk yep. things through. Yep. Uh, the people who you know, send people to war yeah. are not the people fighting it. No. So I think if we're to have wars, the leaders of those countries can get in a boxing ring and they can fight it out. Well, I, 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 I would have paid money for a Trump Putin fight. Ooh, that would have been fun. Uh, Biden did, Putin, that's not a fair I fight. I did give um, the Ukraine president credit for staying. Like Biden was urging him to flee. And he basically just was like, no. Stay in. Yeah, but because you know, I mean, if you're going to lead your people, you've got to kind of like be in it for the. Oh, look, I, I absolutely. And, and, you know, and apparently they're handing out ARs uh, to citizens. Mm. So for the folks who are on the gun control side of things who always go, well, what would you Why need, would you an, need a, it? <laughs> an AR for? You would need it, yep. uh, you know, for situations like that. Yep. Uh, it's so murky and messy, though. I mean, I honestly don't feel like I have a 100% grip on what's Either going on like, there. I, all I know is Russia's invading. I feel like I'm totally like out of what? the loop, but Russia wants Ukraine. Uh, okay, well, I want a million dollars, but... Well, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's more complex than that. In 2014, one might argue that there was a, uh, I think they called it the Orange Revolution, was mm. the one that was in the Ukraine. That was a American intelligence agency coup d'etat that was pushed mm. through for democracy. Like, there's just, there's, well, and there's there, a lot of, like, just I, weird history the there. Right, I was going to say, from the limited knowledge I have, I'm sure Dan could tell me all sorts of stuff, but from the limited knowledge that Tammy has... um. I think there are parts of Ukraine that actually identify as Russian still, even though they're in Ukraine. Because you got to remember that Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. So mm -hmm. when when we when the Soviet Union broke up into all these little things, not everybody ended up necessarily where they aligned. Right, and and that's such an interesting notion because you know if we look at the turn of the 18th, 19th century, there were probably I think there are like just over 70 countries, mm. maybe 70, 80 countries. And then since then, we've seen over time as the empires decline, mm. like the British Empire yeah. or the Japanese Empire, the Chinese Empire, you know, like we've had several you know, Aztecs uh, in the real olden yeah. days. Um, uh, we, we we are seeing this uh, decentralization yeah. happening. So we're seeing smaller and smaller and smaller countries where people, to me at least, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because people are different. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times the things that bind people are values, mm -hmm. religion, yep. language, yep. Uh, geography, you know, all of that stuff. So there are at least two districts in the Ukraine that identify as as Russian yep. or Soviet, and uh, they've sort of said they want to be self-determined yep. or back in Russia, um, you know, but again, we could solve a lot right. of these things through using our words, writing them down, yep. agreeing to stuff, and then sticking well, to the agreement. Well, it was interesting that Putin and, um, God, I'm drawing a blank, Res 
Who's the president of Ukraine? Zelensky. 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 Yeah. Zelensky. I think it's Zelensky. See, this is what happens when you don't well, watch I could, mainstream news. I could kind of see it, and I was like, no, that's the wrong person. Um, Putin and Zelensky sat, did meet um, either yesterday or mm. Sunday, and then there was, like, no information that came out of that. And you're like, well, why is that? You know, does, we're used to getting information. Yeah. So, yeah, who knows? I mean, um, I just hope that... Uh, I like it's uh, it's nuclear powers that's always troubling. Yeah. Um, I saw actually I shared this on my Instagram yesterday. I mean it was horrifying. It was from 2011, so it must have been the last time someone was just trying to scare everyone into you know some kind of frenzy. But it was from Huffington Post, mm -hmm. and the headline said, "Would a small nuclear war solve climate change?" And I was like. I don't know who these crazy people are, but please stop helping. Well, and I saw <laughs> something yesterday, and I, I was just, I, I was laughing, but it was so, it was funny, but it equally sad at the same time. Um, the federal government's recommendation, they have like what to do if there is a nuclear bomb. And in there, so now think about it. If there was a nuclear attack imminent. Think of the things that you'd be worried about. Oh, I was I trained can... in Hewitt Primary School in the yeah. Upper East Side of Manhattan yep. when I was a little, little, yeah. little, little but, one. We had I, the get under the get desk. Under your go, desk go, you know, I mean, the... there's, there were some common sense recommendations. You know, get inside, stay away from windows, things. Six hours before you go out into anything. Right. It's really immediate nothing, after the reaction. Uh, now I just feel like we're moments. scaring people. Nothing in those moments. <laughs> nothing in my brain says make sure you social distance and wear your mask and all i kept thinking was sweetie if there's a nuclear attack imminent the last thing i'm worried about is staying six feet away from another family in and, some basement Come and tammy is not actually making this up I i'm not too making it saw up it and it had um so they'd updated your um i think they used to call it the kiss your ass goodbye yeah well, right um that's a Carlin word. I'm allowed to use that on the air, I believe. I hope, maybe. Um, but um, they, yeah, and not yeah. only that it had um, <laughs> it had the social distancing, it was also like, so have your mask and yeah. your tear mask canister. You know, I mean, it was all just, I kept it's thinking absurd. was that about, I mean, I was laughing at the laptop, but I was also thinking how incredibly, like, this is what's we've broke people. So so I think yeah, yeah. And yeah. honestly, you know, and maybe we'll make this the last point. I have stuff <laughs> on right to know we can talk about. I want to talk about that defend the guard bill and some other stuff. But when I was driving here, I was sitting at the traffic light and there was a guy next to me and he had his mask hanging off the rear view mirror. And you know, and I was just like yeah. So so we did this whole thing about germs, right? Like that's where ostensibly it started. And now we've created a culture that literally has this germ thing. Magnet thing filled. That, that you literally, I mean, it's disgusting. And then you keep it and then you reuse yep. it. And yep. I was like, that is not well, you know, sensible. It just shows, you know, and, and at least at least, I mean, even the CDC has now reversed their position on masks. Yep. They have now come around to what we consistently said for two years, based on research mm -hmm. and data. I, you know, sometimes I'm like, do people think we just make stuff up? You know, well, because I'm just some like, people do oh, just make stuff up. I'm just gonna jolly have this position. You know, or people will say even worse. They're like, oh, you just took this position because it's the Trump position. Right. And I'm like, that's how I, I have live no idea life. what right. Trump is saying, doing. <laughs> well, and do people I, actually I don't believe? believe that that's how we get up and live our lives. I get up and I think, well, what would Donald Trump say about this? <laughs> I don't even think about Donald Trump. Or, or anyone in the GP Any or anyone, right? Like you do your own research and you don't have to do your own research. But if you don't, then really what you should be saying to yourself is who am I listening to, mm -hmm. right? So if you are listening to the CDC, who was consistently wrong for two years, mm -hmm. then going forward, are you still going to listen to them? Are they going to get it right or this time? Or at least time? you're going to be skeptical. Or are you going to be a little more skeptical? Right. So so masks, yeah, oops, sorry, we got that wrong. I am 100% sure. one in sure. case of a nuclear attack. <laughs> well, yeah, don't forget to wear your mask yeah, when, 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 when we're... <laughs> when we get nuked um yeah it's just it's 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 strange and 
the way people or the government does not restrain itself anymore and just simply it, yeah. doesn't follow its own rules, which is a segue to this, this yes. bill yeah, I the, learned about. So it, is that a New Hampshire bill or is that a federal bill? So it's actually so it's being introduced in each state house, but okay. it sounds like it is like there's a lobbying group or yeah. there is, you know, there is an organization pushing this. So it's called Defend the Guard. And the notion behind it is that in every state in the union, mm -hmm. um, you're asking your legislature to say you can only deploy your National Guard in a international theater of war if there's been a declaration right. of war. Which only makes sense. Which makes I mean, I guess people, people, over the years, you know, in our lifetime, over the years, we went from having this active duty army right that went and did all the net worldwide things and then you had the national guard and the national guard used to be like the extreme backup and they were the ones who dealt with new with state issues like you know if there's a flood they call out the national guard and it was always, i always thought it was more of like here's the army and this is the little cousin sidekick and then over the years the army reduced in size and the national guard became bigger and bigger which is fine for you know in the state level um, but then now we use those National Guard members who are supposed to be, you know, one week in a month, two weeks a year thing as like our military base. And those folks get deployed for months or years at a time, which is insane because those people have regular jobs. They're not full-time military by any means. They are not the Army Reserves. They are the New Hampshire National Guard. And for them to be deployed by the federal government to foreign nations, when that's not what the purpose of the Nas New Hampshire National Guard is for, is kind of crazy. Well, to me, it's just... Um... And, and actually, I, I, I spoke to one of the, the activists working on this bill, Derek Pru. He's mm. a National Guardsman, so he's working with the, the national organization. Mm. Uh, it sounded like Idaho might be the first state, the, the person who came up with the ideas from Idaho. So he's been really campaigning yep. and pushing it. Um, and I think they've only been trying for 18 months. This is the first time right, the bill's is... been introduced here in New Hampshire. Uh, he seemed a little skeptical if it would pass this time but maybe now that you know we're actually talking about a real situation yeah. where there could be deployments for a war in Europe maybe there would be more of an appetite for people so if you're anti-war or if at minimum you think that um, the US government should as it's constitutionally required to do declare war before yes. going to war before because honestly we haven't war. done that we the federal government hmm. congress has not declared war since the second world war we have not korea wasn't nope, a declared Middle war East was never a war and on from there why is that a problem first of all i mean if it's the rules of the country right. that you're supposed to be like hey we need buy-in from the people because I bet you there's not one person watching this show, and in fact, I bet you I can't even do it, that could tell you where we are currently. The the, the nation the of America has n not even the military bases, because that's like no, 178 but where we have active countries, right? Where there, you know, Yemen. Yep. Uh, there's still Syria, troops in Syria, Afghanistan. Know. I mean, there's just, there's, there's. Um, and a lot of them are National Guard folks. I mean, you hear about it all the time. This, this unit's getting deployed. I mean, I just remember I was I was involved with the New Hampshire National Guard um, families group, you know, 20 years ago or whatever it was, and it was National Guard's guy. It was the guys who signed up for one weekend a month, two weeks a year, who were being sent into the Middle East. Yeah, and 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 then. Uh... They also, if I recall correctly, uh, one of the frustrations that was expressed to me at least was that um, they were also told you have a two-year term or it was a four-year term, yeah. right? So your incentives matter. Right. It's one of the things we talk about on the show. So it was like, oh, I'm willing to assume this risk for this many yep. years. And then they somewhere in out. the middle of the Middle East wars, they, they, just, they just were like, oh, we're going to change right. that unilaterally, change that contract. Yep. And you're just SOL you're just, if you're... So. You know, and I'm like, well, that sounds like 
con breach of contract. Mm -hmm. So you should never trust the contract with the government because they apparently will just uh, change them, you know, enter into a contract and then later be like, yeah, we didn't really mean those terms. What? You want to get out of the army? Nah, dog, we're going to send you to another war somewhere else. So I did look this up because I'm like, I know you, I don't like to do this, but I was like, but I can get some information while she's talking. So there is a website. DefendTheGuard.us yep. is the main site, and I pulled up New Hampshire and Cody Belanger, who is a Republican in, out of Rockingham District 19. Um, he's the prime sponsor, co-sponsors Matthew Sant. I can never say his name. Santa. Santana Stato, whatever. He's from <laughs> Cheshire. He's also a Republican. Uh, David Binford, Republican out of Grafton County. William Foster, Republican out of Hillsborough County. Kevin Craig out of Coas County. Um, so it, that's interesting. The bill, um, I don't and know. And honestly, also, you know, for my Democratic brethren who watch the show, I feel like the Democrats should behind should get behind a bill like this. Well, aren't they the anti-war well, party? So, so... Just saying. Help me out here, because people <laughs> say that all the time, right? People are like, oh, the Democrats are the anti-war party. And I'm like, are they? And have they been are for they? a long time? But are they? Because, I mean, I don't know if it's one of those shifts, right, where, I mean, the Democrats were the racists, the Democrats were the slave owners, the Democrats started the KKK, the Democrats were like the bad guys. And then somewhere along the line, the they propagandists... Just, yeah did their magic well, sauce the, and then they just flipped it I and mean, then suddenly it was like oh no the republicans are getting blamed for literally all the bad things the yep, democrats did yep. so i don't know maybe the democrats are no longer anti-war but if you are i hope you are and i hope you'll support this um bill, the bill number is one. house bill 1092 um the subject an act requiring an official declaration of war for the activation of the new hampshire national guard um, it, it'll be heard in the State Federal Relations and Veterans Affairs Committee. So that's under um, Al, Al Baldazara chairs yep, that yep. one, and he's um, very... So that's interesting. I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't heard that there's so much legislation out there that I, I, you know... Yeah, we have a lot of right-to-know bills that have been um, coming up. Oh, <laughs> Notes. So, so no, no, I have notes, but I was just laughing because my note here says, uh, after last night's interview, it just says, join Space Force. That's okay. going to be my new mission. I'm going to be like, yeah, I could do that. They get, I um, bet you get a polo shirt with a Space Force logo. So, so we do have some right to know bills uh, coming up as well. The big one is the Ombudsman bill. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've been given a date for that one yet. But um, that would make a big difference. The other thing we did, because we had a, I had my right to know board meeting a couple of weekends ago, is we've asked the attorney general's office to issue a new memorandum. So back in 20, I think it was probably 2015-ish, mm -hmm. there was like a 138 page memo that the AG's office gave out to police departments, municipalities, citizens, uh, talking about the right to know law and mm -hmm. what the constitutional restraints are to the extent there are, what can be rejected, all of that stuff. And it was a really useful document. Mm -hmm. A little, obviously, towards the, hey, what can the but state get away with hiding kind of some thing. Some instructions. But there were good instructions. Now, since 2015 and since right to know, New Hampshire has been more active and we have, you know, people really looking at this issue. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, they... Uh, there have been a lot of changes, and we've actually expanded to some extent under case law what we should be able to get access to. Are we getting it? No. Are we spending a lot of money to win the cases to prove it? Yes. But uh, we did send a letter to the AG's office. Um, I, I drafted it. I believe it went out last week. Just asking, hey, can you guys update this memo yeah. that's like seven years yeah. old now and help us better understand? Because I think at least if there's like, again, if we have the ground right. rules, then everyone can go, oh, oh. those are the rules. Right. Let's follow the rules. But if you rules. don't know what the rule, if if the memorandum is at seven years old and the law has changed since then, now uh, we're back into that muck system well, where nobody knows which rule to follow. Right, both that, and then of course, it's also like, well, if you want us to follow the rules, we should know what the rules are, but also, if you want us to follow the rules, you have to stop breaking the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other one I was mad yeah. about, 
Did you read about this, uh, the city alderman to hear plan that addresses snow emergency issues? Um, so I don't know if I don't totally misunderstood this. I think I read it differently than you did. I but but to tell basically you. they were like, oh, we're going to hire four extra cops to tow cars and ticket people well, during snow emergencies. So I was and trying I was like, to, and I didn't comment back because I wasn't sure which way to interpret it. I didn't know if they meant we're going to pay four officers when we need them to ticket or if they were looking to hire four entirely new. I mean, my reading of it was we it, were going to hire four new based on ooh, but conspiracy they, theorists targeted oh. Claremont Hospital over COVID treatment. Um, that sounds interesting. I couldn't tell. And it, <laughs> I clearly haven't read the paper today, it, guys. It was interesting. <laughs> but the fact that I couldn't tell which way it meant right. was concerning. Because I don't know if they were trying to justify four entire salaries of police officers to try to generate revenue by ticketing more people. I will agree. There is a problem with snow removal. The problem, part of the problem is, is I don't believe that the people managing the snow removal up here, the, the people who are getting paid well to supervise and manage, are really pay, thinking it through because there's no obligation to make it work or make it convenient. You get your paycheck regardless. So, so there's no, no customer who can quit, fire you. So, so. I'm glad you mentioned that. So my husband, Louie, and I were, over the weekend, we were kind of talking whenever this thing came out yesterday or the day yep. before. And we were talking about it. And I was like, OK, let's do like a, a, an ex, a mind experiment, like just brainstorm. Yeah. And it's like, what would something like this look like in the private market, right? Because yes, there is a need. It's useful when the streets are plowed yep. and they're clean and you know people yep. can park and all of that, right? So, so here's a service that seems useful that someone should provide, whether it should be the government or someone providing a private yep. service, we can argue about that. But I was like, well, you could probably, with the technology we have today, you could, I mean, you could do it in a seamless, smart way. You could probably do neighborhood grids. Right. You could literally say, well, here are the 10 places you can park because, you know, they, they also are, make it really hard. And there are no shuttles. Why wouldn't you be like, okay, if you park want everyone to park at the Coliseum the or the West Side Arena, then, have those then be like, okay, a bus runs on the half an hour yep. and it will take you back to your neighborhood, which is a colored yep. grid. So maybe they're like, maybe they're purple right. gets done from 8 to 10 in yep. the morning and whatever, yep. right? Like there's just a hundred ways yep. you could skin this cat. I don't know why that's no. a saying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't skin the Don't gad. Skin the cat. <laughs> uh, but, but it is. There's a lot. That's what I keep finding. Like my brain goes, this should. This shouldn't be this difficult. There's a lot of things I see. Because then, what happened? The frustration people are feeling right now. But I think part of this is because we ignored it. The we, the government, ignored addressing how to make this work. Um, people live on streets that are narrow to start. They, there's residents who follow the rules and park on the side of the street. They move their car when they have to so that supposedly the city will come by and remove the snow. And they get very frustrated because, you know, that guy down the street didn't move his car and now they didn't plow my street and now I'm parking in a snowbank. And I completely can appreciate that. But again, you, can, you also cannot convince me that the city has the capability, literally has the physical capability to remove all the snow across the entire city Every, every between the hours of 10 and 5 we don't if we that i i just don't believe it if we could segment it out now i also checked i used to get nixel alerts because they talk about communication i used to get nixel, nixel alerts and i don't feel like i've gotten one in like two years so i went out and i clicked on my subscriptions and i this is a couple weeks ago i remember and i did that, it because yeah. i was like well maybe somehow i've unsubscribed and i don't see how i have <laughs> but i went in and i made sure i had my email I still have yet to receive a Nixle alert for a snow emergency mm. or anything else. So I'm like, maybe people aren't being notified. I mean, I'm sorry with today's these. Everybody's got one. Send a text. Send a Nixle. <laughs> Facebook mark. I mean, but literally don't... everyone's got one. I saw a clip of a homeless guy who was oh like, God. I get $800 a month to sit in my tent and watch Netflix on my smartphone. So why not? You know, <laughs> why not? Her, uh, like you said. Or... Fentanyl. Break us up into four or five sections of the city. I mean, when we pulled into and, park today, there's a sign in the snowbank that says no parking at all. But he tomorrow, cares. why we can do it downtown, so, but, but we he, can't seem to do it in neighborhoods. And here's the thing about saying let's brainstorm or let's whatever, let's right? Take. Is 
the the problem with government is they they always go there must be one solution no. and so we're going to take 10 years to decide what the solution is get everyone to buy in and then we're going to implement this solution and then it takes us another 10 years if we want to ooh i don't know just like turn a little bit this way yeah. right what the market provides and the beauty of the market is literally we don't know. Maybe there are 10 different solutions. And maybe you're like, well, I'm the person right. who wants to pay money to have my block. Yep. Like I'm the rich person on the block and I'm going to, I'm going to hire this, like the, 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 uh, Cadillac service out of it. You know, like I'm, I'm getting yeah. the town car service and my gift to my neighborhood is my street gets yep. plowed immediately. Right. Or whatever. We don't know, but that is what the market provides is it allows the nimbleness and the flexibility and the robustness to be able to change. Like maybe someone's like, oh, I think this is a great idea. And then you're like, oh, that that was a really bad that idea, Carla. The well, Uber, you know what the, I, the, 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 you know, the Cadillac of snow plowing in, is not a thing. Maybe in, that's right. And what we do currently in Manchester, I think, and I don't have any data to prove it. I'm just thinking it just doesn't make sense in my head. I think when we went from Every other day, left, right side, you know, even number days you park on the even number side, odd number days. And there was confusion because does that mean at 10 o'clock you're on the even or odd? I get that. What happens on the 29th so, right. of February? So then they, <laughs> they switched it to whole months. But then I'm thinking about it and I'm like, so for a whole month, so for the entire month of February, one whole side of the street never gets plowed unless we have a snow emergency and then they still don't plow. And I'm like, doesn't that seem like that would just narrow the streets? Just yeah, I, I just, I, I, you know, everyone I who watches them. this it knows we're proponents of the market. And, and I think people lose sight of things. One of the things Tammy and I were talking about before the show is I think people have lost sight of the fact that if the government doesn't, mandated or make it a law people seem to think it can exist or yeah. it shouldn't exist or you can't do it or whatever may i remind no you if you <laughs> want to wear a mask wear a mask exactly. you could have done that from the start the yep. point is just you don't get to tell other people what they need to do you take care of you we take care of us and that's how it's supposed to work this 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 Malbalance, unbalance, misbalance, unbalance, unbalance whatever, whatever the word is. word is that we're we're living through is because half of society has this notion that they have to force the other half to do things. Everyone just chill out, man. Just chill um, out. Closing notes. Um, Victoria Sullivan running for alderman in the special election on March 15th in Ward 9. You can get information about her at victoriaformanchester.com. Um, I know, I feel like I had another thing. Um, March, the, the dairy field I saw has groomed their um, cross country trails again since oh, we cool. had that snow. So if we're gonna get stuck with snow for a while, Maybe get out and try cross country skiing. See, I'm joining Space and Force, and I have learned how to cross country ski on my list. We haven't so. done that yet. But anyways, <laughs> we're gonna be out of time and stay warm, stay dry, um, and we'll be back in uh, seven days, and hopefully it'll be sunny by then. See you soon. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>